So what happened to silver, gold, and platinum, and palladium today? Everything took a hit. So what happened? I'll give you a rundown on it. Uh, basically, we had some uh, quick <laughs> turns of events here. Uh, actually, it was a lot of good news that came out in some ways. On the um, U.S. side, as far as the uh, economy goes, uh, private payrolls positions jumped 176,000 positions. Experts expected 100,000 positions, so it did a lot better. Initial jobless claims for the unemployed were the lowest in six weeks, so that was good. In layoffs from uh, companies, you know, people being laid off fell to a 13-month low. So that was good news for the economy in general. Then, also on the other side, what goes on in the currencies, the Bank of England announced a further 50 billion pound, 50 billion pound uh, in, a round of quantitative easing. And the European Central Bank cut interest rates. And the Bank, People's Bank of China also did some aggressive easing. So, you know, you add that up by default, that's actually bad for their currencies. That's bad for the euro, bad for the yuan, bad for the uh, British pound. So by default, it comes out good for the U.S. dollar. Now, you look today, everything's down for the metals, but there's one thing that's up, and that's crude oil. So why is crude oil up? Well, very simplistically, um, and actually that's all that really needs to be said, is crude oil is up because Iran has been uh, threatening to uh, close the Straits of Hormuz again. So, same old game. I swear, maybe they're in with the Western banksters. Maybe they have a, they're in here with the traders, you know. All they have to do is make an announcement, move the price up, right? We're going to close the Straits of Hormuz. Oil goes up several dollars, and if you have that inside information before they say so, you're all set. You never know, right? Um, also, Iran also says they can destroy all the uh, U.S. forces in the area within a matter of minutes. That's what they claim. So, we'll see. But things are heating up again, so that's why oil's up. Now, um... There's one thing here, I'm not going to actually go over this article, but I'm going to say, you know, one thing to actually look at a lot, you know, people look for inside information from Lindsey Williams. I'm not going to even show too much on this. Uh, Council on Foreign Relations, CFR.org. And this is talking about the uh, EU banking union and stuff like that. Well, basically what it comes down to, just to actually just say a synopsis of what I read off of that, is that, you know, expectations you saw last week, the metals jump up a lot. That's because expectations are that they're going to do a lot of easing in Europe. They're not going to go to the austerity route anymore. That's why the metals jumped up one of those days last week recently. And um, that's just the expectation. But the Council on Foreign Relations definitely is not against the euro. They never, ever, ever call for... Um, going back for countries to go back to their individual currencies. They don't call for it. Now, that could be where a country does that. I don't know. But that's not the plan. The plan is to keep everything together. And, you know, it's the same old Hegelian concept. Crisis produces change. You need a crisis for so people will swallow the bitter pill, right? You got to have that crisis because, oh, what do we do? What do we do? Well, we got it right out here, blade out for you, you know? So, that's what's going on. But, you know, if you, you know, I, I know people listen to, like, Lindsey Williams. They listen to, I don't know. They listen to all these people that got all this supposed inside information. You know what? If you read the Council on Foreign Relations uh, flagship publication, Foreign Affairs, guess what? You'll get that information. It's, it's weird that, <laughs> I don't know if I'm considered alternative media. And, you know, don't get me wrong, too. I want to interject this. When I say that the Rothschilds, I, um, actually, I saw some things I posted before that were unpopular um, about the Rothschilds. I'm telling you right now, I think the biggest danger is in the military. There are screwballs in there, man. They'll, they'll pull the plug, baby. They will. They will. You go, we'll watch them more than anybody, except we don't know who the hell they are. And there's a lot of theories out there. It even goes into the aliens, you know, and all that other garbage. But, uh, you know... Uh, I just got off track there a little bit, but I just want to say that the powers that be, the elite, if you want to know what the elite are doing, read Council on Foreign Relations. It's kind of boring stuff, 
So I'll just tell you right off the bat with the gist of that article was that they're going to try to keep the European Union together and it's going to be um, one big, it's, it's going to be centralized fiscal policy. So in other words, anytime there's a crisis, they're just going to move to more centralized control. And the expectation is right now that there's going to be more quantitative easing, which will be bullish for the metals. So today... Uh, it looks like what happened today with, you know, all the payroll data and all that type of stuff and the unemployment data and things like that and uh, the layoff data and stuff like that. It looks like that's more excuse or not. That's more reason that Ben Bernanke will hold off a little longer on QE. But, you know, I know these are little daily stories and uh, the situation is not that great because the markets are actually going down. If the markets go down, not so much the metals, but if the markets go down, you can expect um, him to do QE. He's not going to let the markets go down too, too much. And that would actually be in Obama's uh, favor, too, to do that. Because if the markets are way to help down, his ass is going to be out of office, guaranteed. I mean, if we lost, like, uh, you know... 15% on the uh, S&P or something like that by the time the election rolled, rolled around. Uh, his ass is out of office right there. I'd almost guarantee that. So that's one reason we'll probably see the QE before the election is here. That's just my guess. Um, now, it depends on a number of things. There's a lot of what-if situations. But, you know, you notice how fast Iran thing is heating up again. It could be on. It could be off. You know, it doesn't take much to start the whole deal. It doesn't take much. That's the whole thing I always had in the back of my mind. It only needs one thing to happen. One mistake, and the whole deal is set off. Then what happens? Gold goes through the roof. Oil goes through the roof. And then silver's going to start taking off, too. So, that's going to actually have a, you know, that's a wild card. We don't know what's going to happen there. So that's one reason I think the metals are might do extremely well this year. I'm uh, almost betting on a war with Iran. But you know what? I don't know this for a fact, but neither does anybody else know. Neither does anybody else know. They don't know, and I don't know. But I know it doesn't take much to start the whole deal. So that's another factor to keep in mind. But if you want to know what the elite are doing, read the Council on Foreign Relations, Foreign Affairs. They'll tell you. They'll tell you. They flat out tell you. Most people are too bored and lazy to read that publication. I'll go look at stuff in there, but I don't read every damn word. But I do read stuff in there. Just give me a gist of what they're up to. They're not going to let the European Union fall apart. They're not. All those alternative media tell people telling you otherwise, they're flat out wrong. They're flat out wrong. Because the powers that be are not going to allow that to happen. Period. So, uh... You know, I'm not uh, saying it that I want it that way. I just know that's the way it's going to be.